we can start. Our last speaker for today is Charles Stevens from Salk Institute, and their talk is titled Universality of Information Encoding in Brain Regions Using a Specific Combinatorial Code. Okay, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, the, the first half of, I'm going to give a talk about two things, and the first half of my talk is going to uh, tell you the, uh, a little bit about what um, uh, about what Sophie just told you, and I, I but I'm I'm using uh, different pictures of it, but I'm going to say some of the same things. Okay, there. This is a, a, a diagram of of the fruit flies uh, um, uh, system, and. Here is the nose. Here is the antenna lobe that Sophie told you about. And here are the, is the mushroom body that Sophie told you about. And these are the Kenyan cell. Okay, there are, in the nose, there are 50 types of ORNs, odorant receptor neurons, and there's about a dozen copies of each one. I, I, uh, I have shown you uh, here in, in, my, in this diagram, I have only showed you uh, three different to, uh, uh, three of the 50 different types and their different colors. As Sophie told you, each type of the, of the, um, uh, each type of the ORNs sends an axon to the, um, to the antenna lobe and, and there are 50 glomeruli In the uh, in the antenna lobe, and um, and all of the all of the of the projection all the ORNs in the fly's nose of the same type go to the same glomerulus. And so, for example, uh, here is the this is the the blue type of. Um, uh, of uh, uh, ORNs, and it sends all of its uh, axons to this glomerulus right here. Uh, there, there, but there, there is one glomerulus for each type of, o, of ORN, and there are also 50 types of projection neurons and this is the projection, the blue projection neuron. And it's right here. And it sends its dendrites to the blue uh, glomerulus. And, and then it projects uh, its axons to the, to the 2,000 Kenyan cells. Uh, in the mushroom body. Now, <clears throat> each of each of the fifty glomeruli um, project to about half a dozen uh, on, on uh, and, and randomly uh, to about half a dozen uh, Kenyan cells. And <clears throat> and what and Sophie told you a lot about. Uh, about how those projections are work working and what the preferences of different uh, different types of projection neurons are, but I'm only going to be talking today about the uh, uh, about the projection neurons. And as I said, there are 50 types, one for each ORN type. 
and <clears throat> uh, and the, the axons uh, of of those are, are what go to the to the Kenyan cells. The projection neurons. Uh, the 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 whole point of the antenna lobe is to remove the concentration dependence that the ORNs show. So if you use a low concentration of an odor, then uh, then the neurons will fire slower. And if you increase the concentration of the odor, the ORN uh, uh, odor receptor neurons that, that project to the antenna lobe, they increase their rates. When you get to the antenna lobe, however, the uh, Charles. Uh, Charles, your hand might be covering the mic. Oh, I'm covering the mic. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, and e each of each of the projection neurons uh, in the, from the, from coming from the glomerulus has the same mean firing rate, independent of the concentration. So it's a very important feature that the the projection neurons. Uh, for uh, for for all the odors that it responds to, sometimes, as Sophie pointed out, there's only one odor uh, that a, a, that a, um, a projection neuron will respond to, and in other cases, there uh, there are a lot of odors. And in general, most of the many of the odors uh, respond to. Uh, uh, many of the projection neurons respond to many different odors, and the and the mean odor rate is uh, is the same for every projection neuron. What that means is that um, uh, that 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 the mean rate is that the that the uh, odor concentration is removed from the uh, uh, from the from the projection neuron information, and so every projection neuron sends information of, about all of the neurons that uh, all of the odors that it gets to the mushroom body. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking to you about today is the, um, uh, is the, um, uh, the, the, the projection of the antenna lobe projection neurons to the mushroom body. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, because all projection neurons have the same mean rate, uh, that uh, that that makes makes a, an, an interesting uh, observation. makes an, makes for an interesting observation, which is that if you if you have uh, the same mean rate for every odor. Uh, o o every projection neuron for, for for all the odors that uh, that that you you, uh, you you use that you get what that means is that uh, that the odor code uh, it might m might have an interesting property which is that it might have an exponential distribution of firing rates and the reason why it might have an exponential distribution of firing rates uh, is because in order to encode the most odors with the fewest number of projection neurons, what you would need to do is 
uh, you, you would need to have what is called a maximum entropy code. And a maximum entropy code basically says that th that you you can you can encode the most odors if uh, if you have a maximum entropy code uh, with the smallest number of neurons. And there are different maximum entropy codes. So, for example, if the mean firing rate of the uh, of the, of the projection neurons was constrained then you would have an exponential distribution of uh, the maximum entropy code would be an, a maximum uh, would be a maximum entropy code would be a, a, an exponential and if you uh, had for example if you constrain the mean firing rate and the uh, and the standard deviation of the uh, of the firing rate both of those things then the maximum entropy code would be a uh, gaussian distribution and there are many different possible maximum entropy codes. But the only thing we know is that the mean has been constrained, in this case, for, uh, for every odor. And, and if, if the mean is constrained for mean firing rate of projection neurons for every odor is constrained, then you would expect an exponential distribution. So I took data from Rachel Wilson's laboratory, and uh, and th those data are right here. There are 126 data points, and the projection neurons are the, are the are the blue ones, and the the, the and, uh, and and in Rachel's lab, they measured. Uh, 18 different odors, and those 18 odors are down here. And they uh, took seven of the 50 uh, different projection neuron types and, uh, and, and, and measured seven um, projection neurons. And uh, and they presented eighteen odors to each of to each one of those, and those are the bars here. And what you can see is that 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 for the eighteen odors, uh, the the firing rates are different across all seven. So right here is um, is one odor. Uh, and you can see that the, that the heights of the bars are the, are the same. So for example, it, it, this is pretty high there, and this is really low there. And, there. and if you look across all of those, that's true for all of them, that, 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 that sometimes it'd be very high for certain odors, and, uh, and the firing rate would be low for other odors, for example, that one. So to test the notion that the fly uses a maximum entropy code, what I did is I measured the heights of each one of these, uh, of, of these, uh, uh, took, I took a millimeter ruler, I made, made a big, very big copy of this. I, I measured the rates and the rates are shown over here. And in all cases, they're zero to 200. This is the rates. Let me do it better. They're all, they, they all range between zero and 200 spikes per, uh, spikes per second. And, uh, and if you, um, uh, and if you, uh, 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 measure them all off, which I did. Uh, it looked like garbage. I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell there was any order in it at all. But then what I did is I rank ordered 
the uh, the projection each of the projection neurons firing rates for each of the 18 odors and i plotted a cumulative histogram of uh, firing rates this is this is the projection uh, neuron firing rate here And this is the cumulative probability here, capital, capital P, grows zero to one, that's the cumulative probability. And I just plotted all 128 data points on the same graph. And these lines here are the 128 data points. And this smooth line here is what you would get if you had a, a maximum entropy code that had a, uh, that for every odor, it, there was an exponential distribution of firing rates. Okay, so this is an exponential. Distribution. Every projection neuron, then, the mean firing rate is the same because if you measure the mean firing rate for all the projection neurons that, that, are, on, that are on the left side of the slide, it's the same for every one of them. And uh, if you plot them all together, they all fall on the same exponential distribution. And so this says that the projection neurons have an exponential distribution of firing rates, which is a maximum entropy code, which means that the projection neurons encode, um, encode the most odors uh, that it can with the 50 neurons that, uh, that it has. This is a combinatorial code because you have 50 projection neurons, each of which is firing uh, with an exponential distribution of firing rates, but different odors are small, have a, a, a big firing rate or a small firing rate for each one of the, uh, 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 for, for different odors. And so it might be, for example, that if you looked at uh, butyric acid, which is which is um, right here, it might be that butyric acid had a uh, had, had a, a low firing rate uh, uh, there and uh, a higher firing rate there and a high a much very high firing rate up there. Uh, and what would change if you move from butyric acid to butanol is this the, the graph that I've shown here is, is the same always. And so it's always an exponential distribution. And what changes is which projection neurons are firing at which rate with the same exponential distribution and the same mean. Okay, so. <clears throat> this is quite different from what's usual. So for example, V1 encodes visual information by according to which neurons in the, po in the population that are responding to odors, which neurons are, uh, are, are, are responding. The fly olfactory system, however, uses a combinatorial code. That combinatorial code is, is given by the firing rates of the 50 projection neurons that are, that are firing spikes. And, and, and the, pop, the population code is the same for every odor, and it and it has the same exponential distribution for for every odor, so that means that the that the, that uh, that the, that the fly is using the code 
that permits it to encode the most odor with 50 types, types of neurons. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that is, that is uh, a, an example of what the code is using, what code the fly is using. Uh, and it's, a, it's a quite an interesting one because it's, it's very different. Uh, it's very different. This is odors. And this is images. And most of the things that people mostly believe that, uh, that, that, that the code that B1 uses, which is, says that, that uh, which cells are firing spikes, tell you the information about, uh, about the, the, the image. But for the odors, the same cells are firing spikes for every odor, just at, just at a at, at a different rate. So that's that's quite quite a different way of looking at things than 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 we usually do. And the question is, uh, are there other places where a maximum entropy entropy code is used? And what I'm going to tell you is that. Uh, that in the in the in monkey face patches, so in the infrotemporal cortex of monkeys, there are six different pa face patches uh, that are that fire spikes, and those face patches are shown here. So here is one of the face patches, and this is called the A. M face patch. And, uh, and uh, here's another one. This is the PL face patch here. This is the ML face patch there. So there are six different face patches that get information from, from the, the, the uh, monkey visual system and and they and, and these face patches fire spikes uh, uh, only to faces and not to and, and uh, in general not to other things uh, and <clears throat> the 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 face patches are are all um, around the Temporal sulcus in in the monkey, which is uh, which is right here, and here's the AM face patch, for example. This diagram down here tells you which parts of the visual system, V2, V1, V3, V4, go, sends information to which of the six space patches, and each of the six space patches sends information to other face patches. And the output face patch is AM. Uh, the output face patch is AM. So, a couple of years ago, uh, Doris Chow at Caltech recorded from, uh, from uh, showed monkeys um, 2,000 human faces and with those and, and uh, recorded from a hundred neurons uh, from the AM face patch, and uh, and and uh, I uh, I read Doris's paper, and it looked to me like it might it might be similar. It might be also using a maximum entropy code, and so I sent Doris a. Uh, 
uh, an email and ask her if she would send the her uh, her AM face patch data to me, and she said she would she would be glad to do it. And what she sent me was a matrix, which was uh, which was uh, actually ninety eight. 98 um, neurons recorded from the AEM face patch. And on the other axis was 2,000 faces. This, the uh, the same the same view of every faces, and so this matrix uh, was a large matrix, ninety eight times two thousand, and in the matrix for each cell here, uh, uh, for 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 each of the cells, there would be one face here, and there will be a rate in here, and so this matrix is full of rates which are the uh, face uh, the, uh, of, the, of the 98 neurons that Doris recorded, uh, recorded. So what I did is I measured the, uh, I, I, I looked at all uh, 2,000 faces and all 98 neurons, and this is a graph of the number of neurons that are responding to each of the um, uh, of of the ninety eight neurons. And the the, the and and I rank ordered the ninety eight neurons with with low firing rates here. And the highest of uh, and 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 the uh, ones that 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 responded to, uh, uh, the, the the ones that responded to the um, uh, w w to the most uh, faces uh, and <clears throat> and here are the number of faces that were being activated. So, for example, this. Um, this particular neuron here activated uh, something like 350 faces, and this and and the, and the neurons up here, there are about nine of them. They responded to um, uh, uh, to all 2,000 faces. This is 2,000 here. Uh, all 2,000 faces, and so this graph shows you that most of the neurons responded to um, uh, to most of the faces uh, and <coughs> uh, and this graph here shows you that th this is the uh, this is neuron uh, th this is the number of the neurons down here and these are the uh, uh, the uh, for, for for this is for this is for uh, 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 each each neuron on here uh, one to ninety eight fired to uh, uh, various faces and uh, and and this is for face one. And this is phase two over here. And so I just I just compared uh, for for two faces which neurons were firing. And what you can see here is that that different uh, different uh, neurons respond to different faces uh, for for the for these two faces, and that's true for everything. 
The next thing I did was I reanalyzed Doris's data. And <clears throat> the first thing I did is I, I measured the average firing rate of neurons that were firing spikes. 98 neurons were recorded, but something between 60 and 85 neurons responded to a face. The ones that didn't respond to that face didn't fire spikes at all. And so there was a different number of neurons responding to each face. And this is the average firing rate of, of and these are the face one through face 2000 down here. These are the faces. And so what you can see is that even though the number of faces, the number of, of neurons that fired was they were not the same they were all the neurons all the neurons as i showed in the, in the previous slide uh, 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 responded to quite a few faces but uh but none of the neurons responded to all uh uh, uh to all uh, 2000 uh, uh, the, the number of neurons that responded for a, Charles, we can't hear you. Sorry, I, I keep. <laughs> thank you. Uh, e each of the each of the neurons um, re responded with the same rate for all 2,000 faces, the same mean rate for all 2,000 faces, even though the number of neurons that was responded, was responding, uh, wasn't all, wasn't all, um, uh, uh, wasn't all uh, 98, it was, it was uh, something, some, some smaller number of that, but the mean was always the same. Okay, so this is a plot of the average rate versus the face number and and you can see that the average rate is just about the same for all 2000 faces 2000 human faces that the monkeys are responding to and the average rate was 9.7 spikes per second This is exactly what the fruit fly does. On average, in the odor, you, uh, the average firing rate across the 50 neurons that the, that the fruit fly uh, has for encoding odors is the same for every, uh, for, the, for every odor if you cross all the possible neurons that are firing. That's just what the fly did. And so this says that the mean firing rate is independent of face. Uh, it's the same for all faces. So then I took the, the, the neurons that were firing to each face and I plotted a cumulative histogram of uh, of the uh, of the of the, uh, the, the of the distribution of firing rates, that's here. And there are two thousand um, superimposed distributions here. Uh, <clears throat> the firing rate is down here, and the cumulative probability of firing is here, and <clears throat> and the, the and the the white stripe going up here is the superimposed distribution of all two thousand uh, uh, 
distributions for the faces. There's a black line in the middle, and if you look over here, the black line gets quite thin, but if you look here, the, 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 the black line is fatter. I also superimposed on th this, these distributions, I, I uh, superimposed a cumulative distribution with a mean firing rate of 9.7 spikes per second. That's the thin line. Uh, that, 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 that's the, so all all distributions have the same mean firing rate because because that 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 that, that line runs uh, right in the middle of all of them, and then I averaged across distributions this way, and uh, and and plotted the average of all the distributions uh, for for each firing rate. And, uh, and and that that's the, that's the, the that's the fat line here, and so what this says is that uh, that Doris's data uh, has an exponential distribution of firing rates with the same mean for every face. That is exactly the same maximum entropy code. That, uh, uh, that, that the fruit fly uses. And so this is a maximum entropy code. An idea from uh, information theory. And, uh, and, it, and it is this, the same maximum entropy code Uh, this is striking because <clears throat> the the systems are are so different. Doris's faces were all in the AM face patch in the infrotemporal cortex of of uh, two monkeys, and uh, uh, and the uh, and the uh, other data for projection neurons was from the uh, antenna lobe projection neurons of um, uh, the antenna, antenna lobe projection neurons uh, of the fruit fly. And you wouldn't expect these two things to necessarily use the same maximum entropy code. It wouldn't have to. Uh, but, uh, but, but the reason that it might want to is that we, uh, we don't know how many faces we can know, but we can learn any face in the world if we have to. Uh, and and, if, and of, of all the, and there are something like 7 billion faces in the world. And so <clears throat> we have to be able to learn any one of seven billion different faces, and uh, and in order to do that, you would like to have the uh, most. Uh, you would like to be able to encode the most faces that you ha that you that you could with the uh, with with the the uh, with the output face patch patch co uh, uh, neurons. And so you would like to use a maximum entropy code for that. Uh, so you'd be sure you could get the most faces with however many neurons you had. Okay, the, the, um, there are multiple, uh, there are multiple reasons why, um, um, there are multiple reasons, regions of the brain that uh, that uh, use 
a a a, a, a distribution um, uh, like the like the like the fly does. The uh, the hippocampus, for example, encodes things in the intrarhinal cortex, and it sends its information to the uh, to the dentate granule shell cells here. Five and, minutes. Oh yes, yeah, five minutes. Uh, and 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 so um, uh, and so that and in every one of those cases, uh, every one of the cases that I have that I have shown here, every one of those cases, there is a giant expansion when you go from uh, from the antenna lobe, for example, to the mushroom body. You go from 50 to 2,000. But the same is also true from the hippocampus going from the interrenal cortex to dentate granule cells and invertebrates going from the olfactory bulb to the piriform cortex is a large, uh, there's, a, there's a large expansion. And so maybe that in these, in these regions, if we look, went back and looked at it, we might find that all of these regions where there's a big expansion uh, in, in, in encoding uh, the number of cells well, might use a maximum entropy code. And so one of the things that I'm doing now is trying to find out if there are other regions that use this same maximum entropy code. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. Thanks, Charles. We can take questions. Yeah, I think you have them up. Okay. If the same neurons are firing for every odor, then are different odors differentiated on the basis of the firing rate of individual neurons? No. The the the, the we we, we uh, <clears throat> the, the 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 rate of the firing rates are separated in the Kenyan cells in the mushroom bodies. And the Kenyan cells, each Kenyan cell takes something like a random sample. <clears throat> not, not exactly, it's more complicated than that, as Sophie said today, but takes a random sample of, of six of the, uh, of six of the, of the uh, 50 projection neurons. And, uh, and when it does that, and then, the other neuron that Sophie told you about is the AP neuron, which um, uh, which uh, t sends there's one big neuron on each side of the fly's brain that sent that that sends its <clears throat> dendrites to collect the output of all 2,000 Kenyan cells, and then it sends its output back to all 2,000 Kenyan cells. And keeps 95% of the Kenyan cells from firing spikes. So any given Kenyan cell only fires, uh, only, only, uh, only a, a, a small number of Kenyan cells are responding to any odor you give it. 5% 5, 5 of the Kenyan cells are responding to every odor. And so the, 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 various, odor, the various odors are, uh, are encoded by the Kenyan cells that are firing spikes, spikes the, the, the fastest because all the other ones are, are kept quiet. And so there is a, a, a small sample of, <clears throat> of Kenyan cells that respond to any odor. And that sample is what is used for encoding the odor. Um, but humans don't receive uh, sometimes different concentrations of odors. Humans don't perceive sometimes different, con oops, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, the, the, uh, 
the question just jumped and I and I've lost it here. Oh, don't deceive. Here. Don't, humans don't perceive sometimes different concentrations of odors as different odors. Wouldn't that invalidate the odor code proposed, uh, which is independent of concentration? Um, <clears throat> Well, the fly also can perceive different concentrations. It's just that the Kenyan cells are are not carrying that information, and uh, and the, and the information is is uh, is presumably uh, in uh, in in uh, some in some other place, and so uh, uh, so uh, the the the. Uh, uh, the, the odor code uh, may, may be uh, is is independent of concentration uh, uh, for the fruit fly. Also, there is an independence in the AM nucleus uh, that is uh, is view dependence. So, if you if you look at any uh, if you look at any a face at, from different views. You look straight from the front, look to the right side of the head, the, the, the back of the head, look up from below the below the, the chin, up that way, look up above, down, turn the face around and look at the back of the head. Uh, <clears throat> it turns out that the that if you look at the output face patches, the AM face patches, they all fire to the same face at the same rate, which is different, which, which, is, which is going to be different for, for, for uh, uh, dif different uh, 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 face patch neurons. And so what, what, what the, what the, um, what the Doris's uh, face, patches do is if you look at the early face patches it may respond to the uh, it may respond to the front of the face and the right side but not the left side but when you look at the am face patches if, if you if you look at at, at, at at my face one of you looked at my face and it, and it responded at 20 spikes per second looking straight at it and then you looked at, and then you had me turn my head in different directions uh, that cell would not fire spikes at different rates it would fire spikes for every view so just like the uh, the the odor um, uh, odorant concentration is removed for the Kenyan cells face concentration uh, face uh, 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 face orientation is is removed from the from the uh, output face cells, uh, and so that that would that presumably is another thing that would be uh, that that uh, that would that would be true if you look if you looked at other. Um, uh, 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 at uh, uh, other other things that gave uh, something other than faces. Um, also, be uh, one could in, in explore one could explore this by stimulating neurons with a battery of different images and carrying out the same analysis you proposed. Uh, has anyone done that? No, uh, but but we know, for example, that uh, that there are uh, there are, are individual uh, that that there are individual cells for orientations of lines, and uh, and we know about orientation by showing. Uh, by showing lines of different orientations and looking at cells firing. And we can tell by looking at which cells are firing what the orientation is. And that's presumably the same for, for other things that the, uh, 
uh, that that the that the the uh, uh, V1 would, V1 would do. So it, it probably doesn't have a combinatorial code the same way that the uh, that that uh, that that the uh, uh, face patches do. Okay. Are there other? Okay. Let me see some other things. There are multiple neural systems where the population activity patterns seem to be well explained by a maximum entropy distribution that relies on only the firing rate, uh, but pairwise com combinations. There are multiple neural systems where the population activity depends on, depends, seem to be well uh, explained by a maximum entropy distribution. Uh, I um, I don't know I don't know of of, of any of those uh, place cells uh, place cells may be an example of that uh, but retina uh, probably isn't and V one probably isn't could I speculate on the relationship of the nature of the distribution and the complexity of the function of the circuit. Um, no, <laughs> not actually. Uh, I get, because we don't. We we, we just uh, we only thing we can do is find uh, examples and study them, and then we, maybe we can find some order into it. But but if we only know two systems, we can't do that very well. Um, in reference to the projection neuron data uh, shown in the beginning of the talk, am I correctly interpreting your point as the firing of a projection neuron? Uh, how interpreting the point of your talk as a projection neuron, how that neuron encodes the given odor um, yes that was uh, that was that was what i that was what i was s saying that there's a there's a maximum entropy code that was used in uh in in the, in, in the projection neurons that that uh, that, it, that had been studied and and, and that's the, the, the projection the, and the maximum entropy code is the one i said does inhibition play a, a factor in encoding stimulus identity? Um, so we don't know how, we know that the face cells use a maximum entropy code, but we don't know how that maximum entropy code is decoded. It presumably is decoded the same way that uh, uh, that that the flies do odors, but uh, but but nobody has ever studied the uh, how the output face patch where it sends its information and and how the how the information there is uh, is used. Okay, I must be almost out of time. What do you think? Uh, we have time for one more question, and there's one last question at the end of the list, I think. Okay. Um, the layer you call the... There is a combinatorial code in the Oh, we lost you, Charles. We can't hear you. Oh, you can see um, yes, the, the the Kenyan cells do have a a a, 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 a combinatorial code that uh, that that we uh, that we know, uh, and uh, and it and it it is and it is it's, it's not it's not it, it's not a, a simple combinatorial code. But it, uh, it's one that we know is a combinatorial code. And um, 
There's also a combinatorial code in fly um, <clears throat> uh, 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 olfactory, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, in, in uh, uh, fly odor uh, ner cortex. There's there is a combinatorial code there that's that's uh, uh, in, in the in the in the cells that are responding to the olfactory bulb input. Okay, I, th I think I'm, I'm not sure I answered all the questions. Mm, it, it does appear so. Uh, thanks again, Charles. Uh, we okay. can take a short.